Hello everyone and welcome to this video on orthogonal versus oblique rotation in exploratory factor analysis. My name is Christian Geiser, I'm an instructor with Quantfish. So before we start talking about orthogonal versus oblique rotation in factor analysis, why do we have to do factor rotation at all in exploratory factor analysis? Could we not go with an unrotated solution so we don't have to even deal with a question of whether we should do an orthogonal rotation or an oblique rotation? To show you why rotation is usually required in exploratory factor analysis, I have an example here that I ran for seven variables in SPSS and so for these seven variables I found that a two-factor solution was the most appropriate solution according to a certain criteria that I discuss in a different video here on this channel for factor selection and so in this two-factor solution then I first of all looked at the unrotated solution in terms of a uh, factor loading plot that SPSS provides upon request. And so here you can see in this plot you have factor 1 on the x-axis and you have factor 2 on the y-axis. And what you can see here is that the observed variables are all clustered onto factor 1. So this means they all load highly or moderately at least on factor one and they don't have any substantial loadings on factor two. And so that leaves us basically with a G factor that loads all the variables, that absorbs all their variance, and then a second factor that is un unimportant and uninterpretable. So we have no substantial loadings on that second factor. So how would we interpret that second factor? The first factor could be interpreted as a G factor of cognitive abilities, including math ability. So that may have a useful interpretation. However, the second factor then would be useless. And yet we found that a two factor solution here is an appropriate solution according to fit statistics and other factor selection criteria. So therefore, a factor rotation is in order. A factor rotation allows us to make both factors more interpretable and more useful. And so now you have the choice then between an orthogonal rotation and an oblique rotation. An orthogonal rotation forces the factors to be uncorrelated. So meaning they don't, they correlate zero with each other. Whereas an oblique rotation allows factors to be correlated, it doesn't force factors to be correlated. So if the factors happen to be uncorrelated or near uncorrelated, then an oblique rotation will just return a low or zero correlation for these factors. And so let's take a look at an orthogonal rotation first. So when we do a rotation that leaves the factors uncorrelated, then what does this look like? Here I applied Varimax rotation, which is an orthogonal rotation method in SPSS. And again, I requested the factor plot now in rotated factor space. And so what you can see now is that there's a little bit more separation among those variables. So the math variables are closer to the factor one axis. So they are closer here to this axis, whereas the cognitive ability test variables are more linked to factor two. So there's more separation now between the two. These are more associated with factor two and the math variables are more associated with factor one. Now, maybe this becomes a little clearer when we look at the actual numbers in terms of the rotated factor loadings. And so I have prepared that here as well. So you can see here in the factor loading matrix for a very max orthogonal rotation, the math variables have high loadings on factor one, whereas the cognitive test variables have high loadings on factor two. So now we have a relatively clear separation of factor one and factor two. Factor one could be interpreted as a math factor, whereas factor two could be interpreted as a cognitive ability factor more broadly. 
However, what you see here is that we have very substantial cross loadings in this solution. Now remember that this is a solution that forces these two factors to be uncorrelated. So the math factor would be correlated zero with the cognitive ability factor two. And not only does that not make very good substantive sense, because we would expect math ability to be positively correlated with general cognitive ability. But also this leads to a sort of defunct or deficient simple structure. Simple structure means that in factor analysis, we strive to find a rotated loading matrix where all variables have high loadings and on one and only one factor and low meaning close to zero factor loadings on all other factors because that makes the factors clearly interpretable and also makes it clear which variable is an indicator of which factor. So what is this a measure of? Now here we don't have great simple structure because we have these cross loadings on the other factors, so for example, cross loadings of the math variables on the second factor, which range between 0.3 and 0.42. So that is strong. And then likewise, the cognitive ability variables also cross load between 0.34 and 0.43 on the math factor. And so that reflects the fact that actually these two factors in reality are not uncorrelated. So that reflects the overlap in the measurement between the math variables and the cognitive ability variables because they measure something that is related. So math ability is related to cognitive ability. However, we force the factors to be uncorrelated, then that correlation has to be expressed in cross loadings. And that's what we're seeing here. So that compromises the simple structure that we really would like to see. So this is not ideal. Now what happens if instead we apply an oblique rotation that allows the factors to be correlated, which would be more natural here. So then in this case, when we allow this, with an oblique rotation, our factor loading plot looks much better. So you can see now the math variables are much more clearly grouped on factor one, whereas the cognitive ability variables are much more clearly grouped on factor two, with the exception of the quantitative subscale of that test. And that makes sense. So that is a little closer to the math factor and the math variables, because that also uses numerical, mathematical, or at least number material, like the math variables. And so therefore, it makes sense that this variable has a cross loading that is somewhat larger on the math factor, whereas the other ones really shouldn't have that. So this is a much better plot already that makes it much clearer what those variables are measures of. Now let's also take a look at the factor loadings in terms of the numerical output. And so here we can see that the loadings here on the math factor are now clear and there are very few substantial or hardly any substantial cross loadings. For the math variables, you can see that these are only between point, negative 0.037 and positive 0.157. So that's really negligible. So those loadings we wouldn't interpret, they are basically zero. And then likewise, the cognitive ability variables, two of them at least, have loadings very close to zero on the math factor. The only variable that has a relatively substantial cross loading is the quantitative subscale of the cognitive ability test, which again, that makes sense because that uses numerical material. So that is more strongly related to the math factor than the other variables and has a pretty modest loading, still the higher loading, but a pretty modest loading on the cognitive ability factor. So you can see here that the Promax oblique rotation led to a much better simple structure because it allows the factors to be correlated. And in this case, those two factors, math ability and cognitive ability, they are substantially correlated. And so when we allow that, we can 
uh, achieve a much better simple structure in our factor loading matrix, which makes it easier for us to interpret the factors. And that's a more realistic solution where we allow those factors to be correlated. So in practice, I would say, unless you have a really, really good theoretical reason to assume that your factors are uncorrelated, I would always prefer an oblique rotation method because it is more realistic that factors are at least somewhat correlated. Also, an oblique rotation doesn't force the factors to be correlated. If they don't want to be correlated, they, the correlation will just come out as zero or close to zero. So you're not losing anything by using an oblique rotation method. And that typically leads to a more adequate solution that has better simple structure and leads to a more readily interpretable factors. I hope you found this video useful to learn more about exploratory factor analysis. Please also check out the description for additional resources, including courses on factor analysis and related techniques that we offer through Quantfish. And I'll see you next time.